Urban explorers, what is the creepiest we're not alone experience? S. You've had? I've only been brave enough to do the urban exploration once. Well, twice I guess, but the same location both times. Near an apartment I used to live in, there was an old hotel that was abandoned and boarded up. One night, a friend was over and hanging out with me. We had a few drinks and, in a moment of inebriated bravado, a little tipsy, but not fall down drunk at all, we decided that exploring the old hotel would be a brilliant idea. We made our way over and explored a couple of the rooms. The doors were on the outside, so it may have been a motel rather than a hotel. I'm not sure the difference. The rooms were moldy, dirty, broken down, but didn't have anything unexpected. There was some graffiti on the walls and some used condoms on the ground, EWW, in the rooms. Then, we went into the office lobby area. As soon as we walked in, we froze. There, in the distance, in the darkened lobby, was a man staring at us. He didn't move, just stood there and stared us down. We bolted, quickly, and ran at a full sprint back to my apartment. Thankfully, the man, homeless, drug addict, we didn't know, didn't follow us. A few days later, my friend was back over during the day. We were talking about the experience with the hotel and, this time spurred on by daylight, decided to look in the hotel lobby again. When we entered, the man was still there, standing in the same spot, staring us down, and made of cardboard. We had gotten freaked out by a cardboard cutout hawking the hotel's website and online bookings. Oh, I love this one. I was on the other end of this. There was an abandoned nunnery on the coast behind a suburban development, a very creepy but beautiful place. I loved it because it had an entirely stone chapel. Any sound you made inside had true reverb and echo a second long almost. I brought a friend in to make some recordings in the dead of night. As we're leaving a group of laughing neighborhood kids came in on us crouched in the dark over a bunch of electronics. They ran faster than I've seen anyone run before. My friends and I were exploring an abandoned restaurant in this beach town one winter night. We snuck in through a broken window on the shore side, to avoid being spotted by any cars driving by. Overall, inside it was your typical abandoned restaurant, but was still really cool to check out. There was a long bar, tables tossed about, etc. We walked downstairs into a wine cellar, and started walking through the labyrinth of hallways. The basement was deceptively larger than we would have expected for a beachside restaurant. Anyway, we wander into this room off one of the hallways, and shine our flashlight in the corner, and we see an unmade bed cot, with all of the trappings of someone currently living there, a safety razor next to the mirror, random other belongings. Full stop. Our stomachs immediately dropped as we realized we were currently in someone's living quarters, and promptly nope the frick out of there. To this day we still don't know if the person was hiding in the basement with us, waiting for us to leave, or if we stumbled on it while they were out and about. Either way, we couldn't shake the feeling of being watched by someone from the shadows of that basement. I thought this was gonna be a Goonies reference. So there's a moderately well known abandoned mental hospital close to my town. A few months back a few friends and I went to explore a bit. Not a rare thing for people here. We found this setup of a few folding chairs and a couple of old mattresses with blankets and whatever else you'd imagine on them. We chilled there for about 10 minutes and then went on with our adventure upwards. Pretty uneventful from then on. A few really cool graffiti murals, or some view from the roof. When we were coming back down we passed through the room and all the chairs were folded up and neatly stacked against the wall and the beds were made. Or at least as close to that as it could have been whoever did it would have most likely known that we were there and waited for us to leave to do all of that as it was only a time frame of about 45 minutes. No threats or anything just an eerie feeling of being watching in an abandoned mental hospital. So I take a lot of time lapses of nature and stuff. One clear night I decided to drive out to the middle of nowhere to get a time lapse of the stars. I found a lake that seemed like a cool spot to shoot and set up. About 20 minutes in I hear a noise and look up to see a light above me. Sure enough a drone is right above me just hovering. It freaked me out so I booked it out of there. I later learned I was trespassing on government property. I live in a big US. West Coast City, in a neighborhood where most homes go right up to the sidewalk property line and have a yard in back. My place is the opposite, 
House is at the back of the lot. Front yard keeps me buffered from street noise. It's a nice, dark little oasis in the city. My house has a double door split door, so the top can open independently of the bottom. I often leave the top open when the weather's nice. I'm sitting on the couch in the living room, all of 15 feet from the door. It's night time. I'm reading, and the door's more or less directly in front of me. The pork lights off. Yard's dark. The only lights from the dimmed reading lamp I'm using. The wind keeps blowing the top part of the door open. Closed. Open. Closed. I'm used to it. Happens all the time. Doesn't sound out of place. Until the door kind of misses a beat. I don't hear it thud closed. I look up, and it's perfectly still. Only open 2 or 3 inches. It's one of those WTF are my eyes seeing moments. There's like a 15 mile per hour wind outside. How is the top part of the door partially open and perfectly still? Then my eyes or brain recognizes it. The outline of a hoodie. Drawstrings. Hood up. In that instant I am frozen and my heart is pounding. Someone is literally standing right there. Hood up. Holding my door open. I can't see his face. But he sees me noticing because he says. You should keep your doors locked. Motherfucking what? Now my adrenaline kicks in. I jump up shouting. He bolts. I get the porch light on in time to see him running out the gate. I still wonder how long he'd been standing there or WTF he was doing thinking. The door has been very freaking locked since then. As I read your story, I got to someone standing right there and my other phone dings a notification and I jumped. Rural experience. A graveyard behind my high school in the middle of cornfields was a go to driving around spot because we had nothing else to do as teenagers. Early on in the school year a lady parked her car in the back of the cemetery and walked into the cornfield and shot herself in the head. The graveyard is super old and on a gravel side road so no one noticed for like a week. Kids who were running cross country smelt something rancid and reported it. Once it was investigated the truth came out it was weird. She wasn't even from my area. She drove around 2 hours here and had no relation to anything around the area. No note was left. It was really bizarre. Anyways, we were driving around months later telling the story to some younger students, really trying to freak them out. But when we turned the corner to pull in the graveyard a random car was parked in the back of the yard. We slowly rolled up on it while all of us were losing our minds only to see a topless woman sit up from the backseat followed by a topless man. Awkward. But that was the tightest my butt had been clinched up to that point of life. Who the frick fricks in a car in a fricking graveyard? So there's this building in my city that has been abandoned for over a decade. The building itself covers over 40 acres so it's pretty well known by explorers that if the cops come they won't search for you inside but wait for you to come out. The second time I went to explore this building we were looking for a way inside. Keep in mind this is taking place early in the morning maybe 3 am. We come across this section of the building that was a large outdoor amphitheater. We walked down to the center and went up to the boarded up windows. And ever so faintly on the other side of the wood you could hear someone talking. To themselves. We got the frick out of there. They stole it from us. Sneaky little hobbitses. I explored part of an old Nike or Atlas missile site one night with a few friends. As we were leaving, someone started shining a laser pointer at us from the woods. Somehow, we couldn't actually see where they were even though that's usually pretty easy to do with laser pointers. I still wonder if it was just a laser pointer and not a laser sight instead. If it was a missile sight, I'd go with possible guard and laser sight. I spent 2004 to 2009 living in a dilapidated warehouse that had a space over it converted into an apartment. In exploring the warehouse beneath it before moving in, a buddy of mine and I were discussing how the place smelled and was haunted. In making jokes about it we started laughing when something shattered on the wall near us. We were seriously startled and contemplating what it could have been when when someone shouts shut the freak up and there's a homeless man throwing what I assume is a second bottle at us from across the space. In a non-threatening way, I calmly state are you sure you should be in here he waves something at me and yells at me to call the police if I don't like it. I decided to climb a tree with a friend in the middle of a large college campus at 2am. Sat up there chatting a while, then a car pulled up and parked nearly right below us. We go silent. One guy gets out. Driver stays put with the engine running. Five minutes pass. A whistle comes from behind a nearby building. And one is returned from the guy below us. 
A few minutes later someone walks up. There's a short exchange. We can hear and see everything. The guy walks away and the car leaves. We are silent. 10 minutes pass. We hand gestured and decide it's go time. We dropped out of the tree and ran. Technically those guys should have felt not alone. But instead we did for weeks. We were so sure we had been spotted. Great. Next time I am doing anything suspicious I am going to be scanning the trees for random people. There was a decommissioned naval base in the town I grew up in. We used to sneak into the old barracks and one time I turned the corner into the hallway and found a lit cigarette on the ground. There was nobody around from what I could see or hear. We noped the frick out pretty shortly after that. This was back in summer 2012. Every morning my mom used to take me and my brother to our grandparents while she went to work. My grandparents lived in a really isolated rural zone. Near my grandparents house there was a huge abandoned factory and I've always wanted to go to see what was in there. So I begged my uncle, he lived at my grandparents house, to explore that building. He said yes, so we went to the building and searched for an opening to get inside. Once inside, we started to look around the place and obviously found nothing except old machines and stuff like that. When we was about to leave, we heard noises coming from upstairs, and then steps. We saw a shadow coming towards us, so we got the feck out of there running. A few days later, I was at my grandparents house with all my cousins. Suddenly, the neighbors rang our doorbell, and told us that there was someone breaking into our back garden. My uncle went out to check while one of my cousins called 112, local police number. Soon after the call, my uncle came back inside, and he told us that he saw that guy that had broken, running towards the old abandoned building. I never discovered if the guy in the building and the other in the garden were the same person. Pretty fricked up story. My friends and I explored an abandoned psych hospital in Suffolk County, Long Island. After checking out the building with the cafeteria and bowling alley, we decided to leave by exiting through the patient room window that we entered in. I realized I had left my flashlight back in an adjacent patient room, so I told my friends that I would quickly grab it. When I went to the other patient room to retrieve it, I noticed that the door was closed and a light flicker was occurring on the other side of it. I noped out of there so fast. Oh another good one. I was exploring an abandoned rehab near my house with two of my friends and it had just freshly snowed. Literally while we were exploring, I was approaching one building there when I looked down and saw a very large set of obviously men's footprints in the snow, heading into the building. We continued anyway. We always went prepared to defend ourselves BC you really never know. And we opened the door, to a completely silent, empty building. There was a staircase to a tiny loft and we went up only to find that someone had cut a makeshift door in the wall and was presumably hanging out in the attic. We opened that door too, and there was still no one. We never saw anyone but I haven't been back since. It creeped my out far too much. We had finally worked up the courage to explore this super scary looking dilapidated house. It was boarded up really solid. Nobody was getting in and out without a ton of work prying off boards. We searched exhaustively. The easier way in was to just make the damaged drywall on the back wall a little more damage to widen the hole. As soon as we stepped in, there was something vaguely human shaped at the top of the stairs we both saw. We bolted in terror. Of course, me and my friend were only 9 at the time. Was probably just some homeless dude better at finding entrances than us. As an adult now I really want to go urban exploring in the NYC subway's abandoned stations. But I need to meet someone familiar with all the new post 911 security crap because I'm paranoid about it. An even more exciting target is the abandoned 19th Saint Path station. The only even semi-modern footage is just blurs captured from passing trains not any better than I can catch myself. But I think their security is tough. There's keypads at the tunnel entrances presumably to disengage some security thing. My friends and I grew up in a town that had a large abandoned psychiatric hospital. People went in there all the time and we decided senior year of high school to sneak in a 2 ish am. We get in with flashlights and start just exploring. We get up to the third floor and start hearing footsteps. We turn the flashlights off and hide in a room. We watch this big black figure shuffle by the door and down the hall. 
We ran the opposite way to another stairwell and got the frick out. I'm sure it was just some homeless did or something but Jesus Christ we were spooked for a while. Thanks for the creepy image. Have posted this elsewhere but it fits the topic pretty well. Back in my teenage hoodlum days some friends and I did some urban exploration in an abandoned medical facility. It was perched atop a steep hill with only one road in and out, surrounded by a small forest. From what we had heard, this place did some serious procedures, heart surgery and the like. But now it was totally left to rot, or so we thought. We imagined our expedition would be a creepy midnight jaunt through a haunted hospital that we could brag about to our lamer friends. So I drive up this hill and park behind the facility. The first thing we notice is that there are some ambient lights on. The place is not totally off the grid like we were led to believe. No problem. They are probably there just to scare off troublemakers like us. The rest of the facade is dark. There are no cars in the lot. Then, as we're scoping out the exterior, we notice that there's a board over one of the windows. But sure enough, we peel it back and the window is broken. A way in. We waste no time in vaulting up and over, avoiding the edges of the broken glass. Suddenly we're inside and it's clear this place is certainly not abandoned. There are interior lights that come on as we wander around. There's some equipment scattered about. I start to get an uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach. My friends are enjoying themselves and I don't want to be the pee who got scared. Yet I can't ignore the sense of pure dread that is getting stronger every second I'm in this place. Finally I tell them that we need to GTFO. And don't bother explaining why. I drove. So they have no choice but to follow me. We scramble back out the window we came in. Climb in the car and peel off. Turning off the only road that leads up the hill and stopping at a nearby gas station. A few of my friends went inside to get drinks. But a few of us stayed in the car. From the spot where we parked you can see up the hill to the outside of the facility. And we watched as a security car with flashing orange lights pulled up to the front. Followed shortly by a cop car. We must have missed them by 2 minutes. Once my friends come back we point out the welcome wagon sitting outside the facility. And after a bout of nervous laughter we head back home and marvel at how lucky we are. If I hadn't listened to my gut, my hoodlum friends and I probably would have spent some time in juvie for breaking and entering. When my house was being built I did what you're not supposed to do, and went into the construction zone to take some pictures in the frame that was being built. I did it a few times. One of the last times I kept hearing weird noises that seemed to be sort of following me and I totally felt like there was someone else there with me. Anyways. Turned out it was a freaking raccoon that was in there. I don't know what he was doing, but when I saw him I got just as scared as if it had really been a ghost and freaking ran for it. I had an interesting phone call to the builders trying to explain that, I think I saw a raccoon in the house. When I was on the road looking at the house from my car and it looked at me out where the window is supposed to be. He was the welcome wagon. You made a poor first impression. Not urban, but definitely rural was good friends with a guy whose property abutted a forest. He loved to go walking through the woods at all times of the day and night since he was a kid, and this part of the forest was the opening to a broader state park preserve. Anyway, one day, he comes into work and is so excited to tell us he found a large, two-story cabin in the woods he had never seen before. So, it's been about 20-ish years of walking through that area since he was an early teen. He described it in great detail and was sure it was abandoned, even though there was still furniture in there. So, we, of course, were up for an adventure, and it would be neat to have a hangout that's off the grid. A week or so later, we head out with him. All of this time, he's been ridiculously excited about the place, and says he has been to it a few more times, so he knows the best way to get there. After about an hour, he gets really depressive and confused, and he tells us that the house should be right in a clearing that we just walked into. And it was a massive clearing. Two. Large enough for a house. At least. But there was no house at all. We walked outwards in circles for another few hours. Thinking he got lost along the way. But nothing. He was completely upset by this. And he showed us marks he had made on trees that pointed to the clearing house. By the time we got back to his house. He was almost in tears. Anyway, a few months later, he comes into work and says he saw the house again, and we ask him if we can go there. He says, no, you don't want to do that, and is white as a sheet. 
that's the last thing he ever said about the house, no matter how many times we brought it up. I like this one, it reminds me of the search and rescue stories that were oh so popular on reddit a few years back. Not really urban, recently was on a central american beach at 2am looking for turtles just to observe as it is nesting season. Doing it right, walking along with red light on and all, anyways, didn't see any. We had known turtle poaching and drug smuggling on these beaches was common, but until someone pulled up with their lights off blocking the road out, I didn't even think about how I'd handle myself. In the end, if you don't bother them or try and photograph, they don't have to be aggressive to you, but still feels awful to walk by them knowing they're so drastically opposed and so far away from law enforcement or hospitals. That is absolutely terrifying. The sheer awkwardness alone. I was exploring the office complex portion of an abandoned factory and the floor was carpeted, masking any footprints. I knew there were exterior security guards, but I thought they just hung out in their truck outside the front door. It was a nasty surprise when I crossed paths with a guard conducting an interior patrol on foot. I've never ran so fast in my life. I lived quite literally in the middle of nowhere. I worked a night job as well. I was leaving the house one night and heard gunshots, as if dozens of firearms discharged at the same time. I hit the deck and laid flat on my stomach and was freaking out. Several seconds later, I heard it again. I had my keys in my hand and got my door unlocked and crawled back inside the house. I was terrified and had no idea what was happening. I went from window to window literally expecting to see people coming from the woods. There was no one. I didn't go to work or sleep that night because I couldn't figure out WTH. I called my dad the next morning and he was beside himself. He said, you know there was a fort there during the civil war, right? Shots fired from the past. That's incredibly terrifying and also interesting. Thanks for sharing with us. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.